On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1969. We're going to be taking a look at Jimi Hendrix and he's going to be performing his version of the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this is one of those that got blocked worldwide, unfortunately, and as I'm sure you guys understand and appreciate, anything Jimi Hendrix related gets instantaneously blocked on the internet, which is a real shame, especially for a huge Jimi Hendrix fan as I am. I'd love to look at his playing in more depth and have his songs to refer to and just some of his videos to show you guys what he used to do, how he used to play, but we can't do that. And considering that this is the Star Spangled Banner, so not even one of his songs, it's just a real shame that this kind of thing gets blocked as well. So there's going to be a link in the description below to the original performance, and I hope that that is still going to work and the performance video on the other YouTube channel remains. I'm also going to put a link to that in the comment section and I'll pin that to the top of the comment section as well. So this is going to be the re-edited version of the original video that I did. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys in the comment section. And there we have it. So this is one of those videos that has been requested a lot for me to take a look at and it's one of those performances as well that divides opinion and hopefully I'll be able to shed a little bit more light on the performance but also the guitar playing because Jimi Hendrix at this time was the highest paid rock artist in 1969 so I'm sure that a lot of people would have been waiting to see Jimi Hendrix live to see exactly how good he was or how well he played what his techniques were like especially with other guitarists around at the time but the true artist is never thinking about how many techniques they can play to try and impress people they're only worried about their own expression and making art and it's just music that is the medium for that creation of art. I think that Jimi Hendrix, with this performance, was making an artistic statement about the world as it was at that time, the war in Vietnam, and all of the sounds that he's making are related to that, but we'll get into that in a second. And the great thing about art, and great art, is that it doesn't tell you what to think, but it makes you think and then you make up your own mind and that's exactly what we have here when we look into it it's gone beyond a guitar show-off piece because it's not that i'm sure that everybody looking for technical guitar playing will not really see anything in this and if that's as far as they can look into it then they won't get anything from it and they'll just say oh well that was just rubbish and it was a noise but if it was just a noise and rubbish, why is Jimi Hendrix constantly going to his wah-wah pedal? And all of these things that he's adjusting mid-performance, the tuning on the strings as well, if it was just a noise, none of that would matter because it wouldn't have been rehearsed, so there'd be no point going to the wah-wah pedal because it's not going to change anything, it's just going to be a noise. So you can tell that Jimi Hendrix has put a lot of thought into this. Feedback is such an important part of this performance because in order to get the artistic effect that Jimmy is going for, he needs to understand exactly where he needs to be positioned to get the kind of feedback he wants from his amplifier. So before he starts playing, this is why there's a noise. He's just making tiny adjustments, figuring out where he needs to be, where his guitar needs to be to start that feedback loop. And it is something that I have mentioned in other videos about about when a guitarist hits a particular note and it goes on endlessly it is a feedback loop because the amp and the pickups on the guitar I'm not going to get too much into explaining it but I will give an example in a second there is a feedback loop between the instrument and the amp and it means that the note will go on endlessly and that is so important for this performance 
in order to get those sounds that Jimmy is after with the bombs and all of the things that he makes, all these noises are relevant to war. And that was the whole point behind it. And that's what I think Jimmy was saying about the Vietnam War at the time. Imagine if Jimmy hadn't worked out the feedback sound for this performance. It means that when he's trying to simulate a bomb being dropped by a plane and it's whistling through the air and you get that decrease in pitch and then the explosion happening by hitting those low E strings and really going for it on that whammy bar. And that's how he's getting the sound of that bomb being dropped by just pressing down on the whammy bar, decreasing the pitch. When you have that without any feedback, it means that you'd hit the strings, you'd do the dive on the whammy, and then your sound would die. There'd be no sustain. And we're not talking about an Ibanez here with three humbucker pickups going on. It's a Fender that he's playing. So the sustain would die straight away without the feedback. And then when he wants it to sound like there's been an explosion, he'd hit the strings and go to that whammy bar, but then the notes would die. So it wouldn't work without feedback. Whether you think the noises that he's making and the performance as a whole is good or not, that is subjective, is up to you. But all I can say as a guitarist myself and getting used to playing on stage at high volumes and feedback as an entity is so difficult to control. So if you're trying to get a very specific type of feedback that is going to allow you to simulate war and the sound of bombs being dropped, it is so difficult to do that. Let me just give a quick example of feedback. It's the same case with lots of different instruments, but the feedback that you're probably most familiar with is when you talk into a microphone and the speakers are up really loud and you get that nasty high-pitched whistling noise that just deafens everyone it's just the sound being made into the microphone coming out of the speakers and the speakers going into the microphone coming out of the speakers again so you can start to imagine the loop that's going on and once that feedback starts there's no way to stop it unless you maybe use a directional microphone or move the speakers in the background to a different angle so that it's not directly going into the microphone again. And it's one of those things that it can take a lot of adjustment, especially when your PA is ramped up to 10 or 11. But then controlling feedback with an instrument, for example, the guitar like Jimmy's doing here, is now turning feedback into an art form and something that you can control for artistic effect. The other thing that really does show the technique involved with this performance is when Jimmy gets back to the melody of the Star Spangled Banner and how clean those notes are compared to the wild and messy sound that we've heard previously. All of those sounds of war, we have an ambulance in there as well as those bombs being dropped, explosions and you can really listen into it and hear so many different elements. As soon as it's back to a melodic component, all of those sounds stop and there's a definite cutoff. It's something that you can look out for. Even if you don't like the final product of the music being made or the art being produced, you can look into the technical aspects that have gone into it. So. You can have a look at when Jimmy's tuning his guitar, when he's changing the settings on his wah-wah pedal, the Univibe will be on the floor there as well. When you start to pick up on all these adjustments that are being made, you can then appreciate, at least at some level, that there is something artistic going on here by the performer and it hasn't been randomly thrown together as a noise. There is a point that he's making. Eric Clapton was definitely one of those players that saw Jimi Hendrix and his life as a player changed because of the ability that he saw. And this is why when some people watch a performance like this, they might not get it. If they don't play the guitar, if you do play the guitar, everyone's had it where you plug in a new stomp box or a multi-effects processor and you get horrendous feedback from your amp and you can't control it and it's a nightmare, you start to get an appreciation for the control that Jimi Hendrix had of his feedback and his overall live sound. Jimi was one of those performers that threw caution to the wind live, so it meant that 
If he was feeling a particular way or wanted to get aggressive with that whammy bar, he would do. And if it meant that he went out of tune and then the rest of the performance would suffer a little bit, he didn't care about that because it was all about the expression. Just to mention his time with the Army and 101st Airborne Division because he was unfortunately found riding around in stolen cars and the police said to him, you can either go to jail or you can join the Army. So he did the latter and it just turned out that he wasn't an ideal candidate for being an army soldier and it just was one of those things that he was honorably discharged and he had been playing guitar since the age of 15 so a relatively late starter but he was still playing the guitar or at least got his dad to send him his guitar when he was with the army with the 101st airborne division because he missed it and once he'd then got out he started to pursue his music career. Like I said, this video could have gone for years because I am a Jimi Hendrix fan and I used to listen to my dad's old records. He had Are You Experienced, Axis Boulder's Love and Electric Ladyland, but he didn't have Band of Gypsies, the live album, I don't think. So those first three were enough for me to be getting on with. But just to mention as well about Axis Boulder's Love because that album cover here in the UK was just green with a little image at the top right. Whereas in the USA, it was an album cover, which I'm sure you guys already know, and you can type it into Google if you don't know what it looks like, because it's based on, I think, Hinduism, the religion, and it has Jimmy on there and Noel Redding and Mitch Mitchell in illustrated form. And Jimi Hendrix famously didn't like this cover because he said that he was proud of his Indian heritage, meaning American Indian heritage, not Indian like Hinduism. So they got their wires crossed with that album cover, but it was released and it was a very successful album, of course. There are so many things that you can look at with Jimi Hendrix, his approach in the studio as well, to using stereo. And that's something that I found when I first listened to his music, the use of stereo and it just moving around your head almost. And all of these techniques that he used using effects with guitar and really pushing the boundaries on the sound that the guitar could make. I do quickly want to mention Jimmy's death because as you'll already know he was only 27 years of age when he died and you all would have heard the cause of death of choking on his own vomit and something that I didn't realize until recently is that Jimmy had taken nine tablets of Vesperax and that is a sedative and it's something that Monica Darneman, his girlfriend at the time mentioned after the fact, but when people hear that it was drug related, maybe they think of heroin and cocaine, but this drug was a sedative that he took before he went to sleep and by taking nine of those, that was 18 times the recommended dosage. So it means that when Jimmy was asleep, he was heavily sedated. And this is something that if you think about, if you are asleep and you choke, you automatically wake up because that's the body's defense mechanism. But Jimmy was so heavily sedated that his body didn't have that reaction because it was probably almost like being under general anesthetic. And I think a lot of people assume that he was maybe just so far gone with other drugs and that's the reason that he didn't wake up. I know that he didn't sleep well. The performance that we've just watched is reported that he hadn't slept in three days and then when he left the stage he then collapsed because of fatigue and not having slept for so long. So it is something that he struggled with but just to throw it out there that it was Vesperax that he had taken which interestingly enough has now been taken off the shelves. It's not available anymore so so people obviously realize the dangers of it, but unfortunately a little bit too late. But this is one of those performances that is historic and everybody knows it. And I always talk about Woodstock 1969, what an event that was, the amount of talent on show, but also just the standalone performances that people regularly watch now on YouTube because they were so unique and there were so many great artists around at this time and true artists. And Jimmy Hendrix is a shining example of that. He's not trying to show off. He's not trying to play fast. He is making an artistic point with his music. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one.